Alright. Uh, Shalom. The question was asked concerning Mashiach Yavashai speaking on Israel loving thy neighbor. Thinking that it's speaking on us loving everyone and those that are truly our enemies. So we have to uh, look at this in a spiritual way, in a way it's explained through many scriptures before you get there. And he's given us examples of how we are to deal and be with each other. It's very important. But it still has to be dealt with with the understanding of the order of the Most High. And the way we get to order the Most High is through His Word and no other way. And the Mashiach of Shai is the Word of the Most High. He's the the word of the Most High, and He's bringing forth what we need to know, the little that we need to know, and the little part that we know, because we only know in part and prophesying part. Nobody has the whole part. No one. Because the Mashiach of Shai will come back a thousand years and show us, but He gave us enough to look into this Bible and observe and understand what He's saying here. Because it has to make sense. He's not going to contradict the law. Because when he was on the earth, that's all he had was the law and the prophets. This is what they had to go by. The law and the prophets. Nothing less, nothing more. When he walked the earth, they had the law and the prophets. That's why you're going to hear him say, Have you not heard? It has been said. It is written. Where? In the law and the prophets. That's point blank. So, as always, we'll start with Colossians 3 and 17. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all by Hashem, Mashiach, Kavashai, in the name of the Lord and Savior, giving thanks to the Most High and the Father by Him. How we do that? By Hashem, Mashiach, Kavashai, in the name of the Lord and Savior. Because He said, No man comes to the Father but by Him. If you ask anything in my name, I would do it that the Father could be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything, I would do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, do what I say. Keep my rules and regulations that come from. My Father and our Father, the Most High, power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So let's look at it. Matthew 5 and 43. And these are the words of Hamashiach Yavashah, because it's in red. He said, Ye have heard that it have been said, Thou, which is you, shall love thy neighbor, which is your neighbor, and hate thine enemy, or your enemy. This is what he said. So now, we have to look at verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. This is the question here, verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despisefully use you and persecute you. See? So, we got to get understanding of this. Proverbs 4 and 7. Proverbs 4 and 7. Wisdom, which is the proper application of knowledge, is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. So we got to get understanding of what it's talking about. So let us go to the law. Let us go to the law of the Most High and what he said concerning we the children of Israel. How we should conduct ourselves. Leviticus 19th chapter. Leviticus 19. Let's look at 17 and 18. And this is what he's quoting from. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. That's why he said, have you not heard? Here it is. We're hearing it now. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, 
and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, which is your people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the most high. So who is he talking to here? Every, every nation? Let's go up to verse 1 and find out. Leviticus 19, 1 and 2. And the most high spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel. Anybody need that broken down? So he said, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy. For I the most high your power am holy. You see? So when you see, this is talking to the children of Israel. Now, look at uh, Leviticus 20 and 24. Just to, over to the next chapter. Leviticus 20 and 24. But I have said unto you, ye shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the most high your power, which have separated you from other people. So, here you see, the Most High did not have us integrated with other nations. It's clear. Which have separated you from other people. Verse 26. Leviticus 20 and 26. And ye shall be holy unto me. For I the Most High am holy, pure and true and righteous to the utmost, and have severed you from other people, that ye should be mine. So he separated us from other people, that we could be his. Go to Leviticus 20 and 1 and 2. And the Most High spake unto Moses, saying, Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, twelve tribes of Israel, Or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that give any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. So we have strangers that are our people. That's like someone that is Israelite that you don't know. That's the stranger he's talking about here. So now, when you look at, uh, go back to Leviticus 19. This is where it's going to come from. And 17 and 18. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. You're supposed to be doing evil with your, to your brothers and sisters. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. That's your people, the children of Israel. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the most high. So are you full about yourself? That's how you're going to treat someone else. You all raunchy about yourself, hating yourself. That's why you see people that's really down on themselves. They hate themselves. That's how they're going to treat someone else of their nation. But when you love yourself, you can love someone else. But if you don't love yourself, you can't love nobody. You don't know what love is. If you don't love yourself, love thy never thyself. And how you feel about yourself is how you're going to treat somebody else. That's where it is. Look at Romans 3 and 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, we just read the law, it says to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before the Most High. So it's speaking to those that was under the law. Psalm 78 5. So I said we're going to get understanding. Psalm 78 5. Who's, who's, who get, who's given the law? Psalm 75. This, these verses cancel out religion. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, not a religion, which comes from the Latin word religio, means to hold back, keep down, and restrain, but established a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. See? 
that the generations to come might know them. Know what? The law that the Most High gave to the children of Israel. That the generations to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in the Most High and not forget the works of the Most High, but keep His commandments. See? This is the order. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. I'm just establishing who this was given to and who is he talking to. Point blank. From what's already written, this is all he had to go by was the law and the prophets. He didn't sin, so he would be sinning to tell us to go against what it is that the law says and what the prophets say. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. That's the twelve tribes of Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. I'll read to you again. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye, the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. There it is. So, look at John 4 and 9. St. John 4 and 9. St. John 4 and 9. Verse 9. Then said the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. See? We were separated still here. In the, during the time of Amashiach, Yahushai. You're going to see this. See? So, looking at uh, Romans 2 and 14. Romans 2 and 14. For the Gentiles, which have not the law, for the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things, excuse me, for when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things obtained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law to themselves. See? They not, they not a law pertaining to the children of Israel, because most I say he have not dealt so with any other nation. Meaning, giving his laws to any other nation. He's not dealing with any other nation. Because you, if someone's going to say, okay, well, we got to love our enemies of these other nations, then you're going to see, as we've seen so far, that the Most High was not dealing with any other nation. Let's look at it further. Amos 3, 1 and 2. Can't get no clearer than this. Amos 3, 1 and 2. Hear this word that the Most High has spoken against you world, to the world, every nation that's on this planet. Hear this word that the Most High has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up out from the land of Egypt, saying, this is what the Most High said, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. You hear what he said? You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Read you again. He said, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. See? He said, only know the twelve tribes of Israel. So, when you understand this clearly and without a shadow of a doubt, you can see that he's just dealing with the children of Israel. No one else. First John. 
the first John. It's, it's really important, uh, you know, something that a lesson I just went over in brotherhood and my brother's keeper and really be being down with, for your brother of Israel. And that's what he's dealing with. You're going to find out more and more. Go to 1 John 4 and 20. If you look at that lesson, you'll see clearly the whole book is talking to the children of Israel. Other nations fit in where they fit in, and the Most High brings the prophet to bring knowledge and understanding to us in these last days because it's written for us concerning them. 1 John 4, 20 and 21. If a man say, I love the Most High and hate of his brother, who was an Israelite, he is a liar. He's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love the Most High whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth the Most High and a Mashiach Elishai love his brother also. So that's part of what we have to do. He's telling us we, are, we have to follow through with this. We can't deviate from this. This is very, very important concerning the law and the prophets and the New Testament as we're going to see not only in the old but in the new also um, 1 John 2 1 John the 2nd chapter and verse 9 He that says he is in the light and hate of his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. So when you look at those that don't love their people, when the Most High said in John I mean, Romans 9, 13, as it is written, Jacob, have I loved? And you don't love who the Most High love? What you think, he going to bless you? He going to see you come on top? You going to be always angry and full of envy, pride, jealousy of your brother? And sometimes you don't even know him. Don't you know who you're really jealous of? You're just hating on your brother and smiling in front of the enemy, the real enemy's face. Like you're doing something great. And it could be seen. I mean, I just, I, just, I, I recorded the Willie Lynch letter. And the great, great, great grandson's letter of modern times. On CD. Because then, you know, they say you want to keep something much you put in the book. We don't like to read, so I, I narrated the whole thing. So you can just listen to it. And it's in effect right now. Why well, somebody would say that? You know, they taught us to say the prayer, the, the Our Father prayer, forgive us our trespasses and those that trespass against us. When you read Matthew 6 and 9 down, they don't say that. But that's what they taught us. From slavery to now. A lot of people fall and pray to it every day. And have a problem if you come against what it is. This is what it says, verse 11. 1 John 2, 11. But he that hated his brother is in darkness. You ignorant. You're not knowing. You're stupid. And walketh in darkness. You're walking in ignorance. And knoweth not whither he goeth. You don't know where you're going. You think you're going somewhere, but you end up going somewhere that you don't even want to go. You hear what I'm saying? And knoweth not whither he goeth. Because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Do you let darkness blind your eyes? You see, that darkness comes from our enemies. Some people don't realize that's why you, you, you're, whoever it is that asks you is quoting from or regurgitating what they have heard just like it was in their religious instructions of the Negroes in the United States of America. That orders that they brought about in 1620. How are we going to train these niggas to follow the religion that we want to follow 
We want them to follow. Just like Willie Lynch, just like Stockholm Syndrome. It's all together. To this day, that's why somebody will say, you got to love our enemies. I, I got one question for you all out there. You can answer it any way you want to. But it's real simple. Name the nations that love the so-called black man, the so-called Negro in America. The black man. The so-called Negro man. Talk about no African. I'm talking about the Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and all the other tribes that come from the waters of Judah. Name them. But they all down for us, for whatever we, whatever we done been through, whatever we going through, they always there, as a nation. But we as a nation love, told to love everybody. We're going to love these people too, right? We're going to love all, love all these, right? Psalm 83rd chapter. It was your religion teach you, right? Let's find out what the Bible says. Psalms 83rd chapter, the first verse. Keep not thou silence, O Most High. I Meaning, don't be quiet, Most High. Hold not thy peace. To hold. Don't be peaceful, Most High. And be not still, O Most High. I mean, rise. Crumb up and now your heart. Most High power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Rise. This is what it says. For lo, thine enemies, uh oh. The Most High have enemies? We gotta love them though, right? You can ask them. For lo, thine enemies make a turmoil. They make an uproar. They're going off. And they that hate thee, uh-oh, they hate the Most High. They hate the Mashiach Yahushai. You see that? They that hate thee, who's it talking about? Verse 1, keep not thou silence, O Most High. Some of you know him as God. Keep not silent, O Most High. So the Most High is who the subject matter is. He say, for lo, Most High, thine enemies, Most High, make a turmoil, Most High. And they that hate thee, thee is you, they that hate you, Most High, have lifted up their head. They lifted up their head in pride. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people toward the twelve tribes of Israel. And consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Why? That the name of Israel, we knowing who we are, our ethnic, uh, biblical identity in this Bible, that the name of Israel, when you see Israel, like we don't really go get the con tell the congregation of Israel, tell my people of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So right there, they took the Holy Spirit from us. They painted him as a so-called white man. Cause look, I mean, it'll take a rocket science to figure this out, people. It's just, it's real simple. Those that can see the light. Those that can't, I don't know what to tell you except for uh, Hopefully, you'll see what it is that the scripture says. This is what Amash Shai said in St. John 14. And remember what they said. It would take the name of Israel out of what? Our remembrance. Everything that we are, that we were, that we will be out of our remembrance. So you'll just do what your question is. Love everybody else. They don't love us. What nation love us? Don't nobody love, love us. Hold Psalm 83, we've got to go back there. This says, because remember they're going to take everything out of our remembrance. So, Masha Roshai said, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in the name of the Lord and Savior, he shall teach you all things. Listen, and bring all things to your remembrance, to your mind, to your brain, to make you think right. Whatsoever I have said unto you. 
So what did they do? Psalm 83rd chapter. And it's clear. It's clear as day to me. Verse 4. Psalm 83 and 4. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So the Holy Spirit will bring all things back to your remembrance. So you don't have the Holy Spirit if you don't understand the word of the Most High. You talking about you ain't under his laws. You don't have no Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit bringing everything back to remembrance. Take it out. Take it away from them. This is what the Holy Spirit is. For all you that go to church and think that you got the Holy Spirit running around like a chicken with his head cut off. No offense because that's all you know. But it's real. This is real. Everything is defined here in this word. This is what you have. Remember the Holy Spirit bringing something back to your mind. Remembrance. What's more to remember than the word of the Most High? Isaiah 11 and 2. It's the Holy Spirit. The definition of it. And the Spirit of the Most High, which is the Holy Spirit, shall rest upon him. Amashiach Yavashah. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and might. The Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Most High. That's the definition of the Holy Spirit. So, if you have all these characteristics, then you roll it with the Holy Spirit. If you don't, then you following suit. You following the religious instructions to the Negroes, the United States of America, straight up, because you've been taught wrong. If your remembrance is not here in this Bible, what this Bible is saying, then you don't have the Holy Spirit. But you got to come with the word. Look at uh, John, the first chapter. Verse 32. And John bare a record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. That's the Mashiach Yahushua. Receiving the Holy Spirit from the Most High. So now that <clears throat> even, even, even more than that, when you look at St. John 14, <clears throat> he said um, verse 18 he said I will not leave you comfortless I will come to you right so that's why I say people are just regurgitating things that they have heard from religions and so forth and not really understanding what it is that's being said and why it's being said. So Hebrews 1 and 1 and 2, Most High who at sundry times and in divers matters spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets who had the Holy Spirit, because it tells you in First Peter's, go to First Peter's, Second Peter's 1 and 20. Second Peter's 1, 20 and 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time and in the Old Testament by the will of man, but holy men of the Most High spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the Most High spoke to us. It says Hebrews 1 and 1. The Most High, who has sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. So, what did the prophets have? Let's find out. 1 Peter 1 and 10 and 11. 1 Peter 1, 10 and 11. What did the prophets have? Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. We that are under grace and mercy, the children of Israel. Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9, Wisdom of Solomon 4, 15. 
searching what is the prophets or what matter of time the spirit of Amashiach which was in them uh oh you gotta really be down with the spirit to understand what this is saying you hear what it says searching what or what matter of time the spirit of Amashiach which was in them did signify when it testified before him the sufferings of Amashiach and the glory that should follow. See, they had the spirit of Amashiach. So now, going back to Hebrews 1 and 2, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Are you hearing this? By his son. Remember, I would not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He's going to send the comforter that's going to come from the Father. And the most I tell you here, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. The most I made all the worlds, plural, by Hamashiach Yahushua. So, knowing this, that the most high has done this, in the spirit he is, in the flesh, speaking to us concerning who we should love. Now, look at uh, go to uh, go, we'll go back to uh, Psalms 83rd chapter so we can deal with and finish that up so you'll know unless you just anti most high and anti Mashiach Yahweh Shaka you see that it says in verse 2, Lo, thine, lo for lo, thine enemies of the Most High have made a turmoil, and they that hate thee, they that hate the Most High, have lifted up the head. So, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people, who are the children of Israel, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So the name of Israel, us knowing who we are as the Israelites, brought us to this understanding that we have now. Through what? The Holy Spirit of the Most High speaking to us in the last days by His Son. Spirit of Mashiach, which is the Spirit of the Most High. He said, what I see the Most High do, that's what I do. What I hear the Most High say, that's what I say because I am the word of the Most High. The Most High is a voice. You got to hear the voice of the Most High. And hear the voice of the Most High, you hear the word of the Most High. I'm see how you You see, most people ain't seeing this. It's order. Every Most High deal with order. Ain't nobody deal, nobody seen the Most High ever. I told you that in John 1 and 18. No man has seen the Most High at any time. So the only begotten the Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. Mashiach, like He said, the prophets, they had the spirit of Mashiach, of the Messiah, of the Anointed. So ain't nobody seen the Most High. Mashiach was shy, been declared. So now, because He was an angel, or spirit, He is the spirit, he did, he's in Genesis 1 and 1, and Genesis 1 and 2. When he tell you the Spirit moved on the waters, that's him. Following the orders of the Most High. Because Ephesians 3 and 9 said the Most High created all things by the Mashiach. Yahweh Shah. So, going back to Psalms 83. Since they took the Holy Spirit from the majority of our nation. Why are you into all these different religions? And hand you the Bible, you can't really break things down, subjects down, because you don't know. It wasn't given to you to know. Hopefully the Most High will call you out of that, so you'll come and really try to learn what it is you need to know to make it to eternal life. That's what it's all about, no more, no less. Verse 5, Psalm 83 and 5. For they are consulted together with one consent. 
they are confederate against thee. So you with somebody that's a confederate against the Most High. That's the enemy of the Most High that hate the Most High. That the enemy of Mashiach of Shai that hate Mashiach of Shai and a confederate against a confederate against him. That's your. That's who you gonna love. Talk to me. <laughs> Listen. The tabernacles of Edom. Now it's giving names of nations, not just individuals, because Esau became a nation. And they're called the Edomites. All these names of these names are nations. So you can cancel these out, right? Surely you can. The tabernacles of Edom, that's the biblical name for the indigenous so-called white people. And all these are indigenous. And the Ishmaelites, Arabs, or Moab, Chinese, or the Hagarines, so-called Africans, the Baltimore Africans, and Ammon, the Japanese, and Amalek, the chief tribe of the Edomites, the Jewish people today, running everything, got their money. The Philistines, Mo Africans, with the inhabitants of Tyre. See? That's sure Assyria also was joined with them. See? All these nations are the enemies of the Most High, the haters of the Most High, the, a confederate against the Most High. But you want to see it or not? It's real. So let's look at uh, what Amasha Kishai said. So you'll know, point blank, it's not talking about everything. Process of elimination. It's just talking to we, the children of Israel. Look at Luke 20. 21, Luke 21 and 20. And it reads, and ye, and when ye shall see Jerusalem compass with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh, meaning near. So what armies is he talking about? He's talking about the Roman army. He's talking about the Roman army. So now look, look at what he says in Luke 19. And 43, Luke 19, 43, he said, For the days shall come unto thee that thine enemies, you hear this? Enemies, not your friends, your enemies, shall cast a trench about thee. Just a different type of enemy. Enemies. Remember you said when you see the city compassed with armies? That's the Roman armies. And all the nations that was with the Romans to bring us down. From 65 to 70 AD. And our last stance was at the battle of Masada. Listen, for the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side. You hear that? But it says, for the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies. Don't get it twisted. Because y'all want to paint this picture of a Mashiach that was shy like he's this, that, and the third outside from what he is. He's telling you here. Before he told us in Luke 21 and 20, he said, For the days shall come upon thee that thine enemies, the Romans, the so-called Italian Caucasians that will swoop out of the earth when he walked the earth, shall cast a trench about thee and come past thee round and keep thee in on every side have a trench all around us, Jerusalem, and shall lay thee even with the ground. You lay on the ground because you're dead. And thy children within thee killed the children too. He's telling you what they're going to do. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Right? Now that's what he could he had to be most high speak once, say twice, man perceived it not. So he came back again, told us the same thing in Luke 21 and 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, what armies? Your enemies. You know what he said. Gonna put a trench around you, around the city to kick to keep you in. So you can't come out. We fought with the Romans from 65 AD to 70 AD. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh as near. Then let them which are in Judea, see, in Jerusalem, 
Flee to the mountains. If you flee to the mountains, you're going into Africa. This is when we fled into Africa. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein. Two. You see? For these be the days of vengeance. For these be the days of vengeance. You hear that? Keep that in mind. These be the days of vengeance. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. You see? Things are already written. Already prophesied is going to happen. That we can look at now while it was written for us. We can look at now and see. Okay? Matthew, go to Matthew 11. Verse 12. Listen. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the time of Moshe Kavshah is speaking to us, the children of Israel, the kingdom of heaven, which we are, the kingdom of heaven within us, children of Israel, 12 tribes of Israel, suffereth violence. You hear that? Suffereth violence. Now, what do you call the people that, that put the violence upon us? And the violent, you already call them the enemies. Now you call them the violent. And the violent take it by force. See? The violent take it by force. Our enemies gonna surround us. So he's not talking about these other nations that are the enemies of the most high and the haters of the most high. Get this clear. And make it understand. Look at, uh, go back to the, the question at hand. Now do five and 43 and 44. Ye have heard that it have been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I said to you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and send it rain on the just and on the unjust of our people. You see, because go to Joel 2.27. Joel 2.27. Joel 2 and 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I'm in the midst of Israel. And that I am the most high your power. I am a Mashiach Yahushai your power. And none else. You know? And none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. So when you look at a Mashiach, go to Acts 2, 21 and 22. Acts 2, 21 and 22. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of Mashiach El Bashai shall be saved. This is what he said. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Not everybody. Say, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Mashiach El Bashai of Nazareth, a man approved of the Most High, where? Among you. Among the men of Israel. By miracles and wonders and signs which the Most High did by him. Where? In the midst of you. Remember, he said, You shall know that I'm in the midst of Israel, and I am the Most High, and the Mashiach of Shai, your power, and none else. Where was he at? In the midst of you, as ye you yourselves also know. Just right there. And he sure wasn't talking about uh, the ones that hate the Most High. Look at uh, John the 13th chapter, the first verse. John 13 and 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when the Moscow Shai knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own. Hear that? Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Now Hebrews 7.14 says, For it is evident 
is a fact that our power, Mashiach Yavashai, sprang out of Judah. Jacob's our forefathers, whose name was changed to Israel, fourth born son. So now, look at Matthew 15, 24. Just proving that it can't be, he can't be talking about everyone. Matthew 15, 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's what he said. Matthew 1, 21. So he's only sent to the 12 tribes of Israel. Matthew 1 and 21. And she who is married shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Mashiach Yavashah. For he shall save his people from their sins. See? He going to save his people from their sins. Acts 5, 29 to 31. He going to save his people from their sins. So, Acts 5, 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Most High rather than men. The Most High power of our fathers raised up a Mashiach when he slew and hanged on the tree, wicked Israelites, which are still the enemies of the Most High, because they don't care about them. They're the ones that they don't care about the Most High. They're the ones, same ones, said, crucify him, let his blood be on us and on our children, or the Israelites. Two thirds of our people not going to see the light. They're going to remain in darkness. Him, Mashiach Yavashai, have the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins to Israel. To Israel, to Israel, to Israel. Now let's look at it. Go to, uh, just so you know, so I'm just giving you some characteristics of Mashiach Yavashai so you know he ain't, he ain't, he wasn't down with everyone. Go to Mark 7 24. Just reading the words. All you gotta do is write these scriptures down. Hope you're writing them down so you can go over them yourself. New explanation. They're explaining themselves. Mark 7, 24, as it's telling the story. And from thence, Mark 7 and 24, and from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Zidon, and entered into an house, and wouldn't have no man know it, but he could not be hid. He couldn't be hid. For a certain woman whose daughter whose young daughter had an unclean spirit. She was full of demons, had a demon in her. Heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, so she was a so-called indigenous Edomite, or white woman, so-called white woman. A Syrophoenician by nature. And she sought, besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. I'm just here to show you that he, he wasn't about every he wasn't about everyone. But the Mashiach which I said unto her, listen what he said. Let the children first be filled. The children of who? The children of Israel. Let them get their blessings first. For it is not me, which is not right, to take the children's bread, take the children's blessing, and to cast it unto the dogs. He said it ain't right to take the children of Israel blessings, bread. And cast it unto the dogs. We call them all dogs. You don't believe me? David prophesied on it. Hold that. Don't move it. Stay right there. Psalms 22 and 16. David prophesied what Mashiach was shy said on the tree. They crucified him. What did he say? For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. You know they didn't do that to King David. King David put all nations under subjection to Israel. Just prophesying about Mashiach Yavashai as he had the spirit of a Mashiach, which is the spirit that comes from the Most High. And the reason why I say dogs, I looked it up in the Unger's Bible Dictionary, it says dogs. Dog was a word used by the Israelites concerning the Gentiles because of their profaneness and because of homosexuality. Now we look at, uh, go to Psalms 
Go to the book of Hebrews 12. This woman is a Greek. Just like Alexander the Greek, their first emperor of the Greek Empire. So don't get it twisted. Go to Hebrews 12 and 16. We remember it said, we call them dogs because of the profaneness and because of homosexuality. Now it says, Hebrews 12 and 16, lest there be any fornicator or profane person, there it is, dogs, profane and because of homosexuality. Look it up in the Unger's Bible Dictionary. U-N-G-E-R-S. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. See? So, the one was a Greek. Going back to Mark the 24th chapter. Mark 7, 24. Mark 7, 24. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Zidon and entered into a house and wouldn't have no man know it, but he could not be here. Trying to hide from people. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. She came at his, fell at his feet to worship him, this big black man. The woman was a Greek. She was a so-called white woman, Edomite a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. So her daughter had a devil in her. And she begging him, pleading with him, to cast this devil out of her daughter. She recognized him. What am I going to say unto her? Let the children first be filled. For it is not meat which is right to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. What did she say? And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Master, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. So she admitted that they were dogs. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. You see? And he said unto her, For this saying, for admitting that all of y'all dogs, that's what he says. That's what she said. Y'all take it over to Most High, because he's the one that had it written. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy door. And when she was gone to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. But you see, he said, For that saying, this is how. Acts 13 22. 